let's go into in the introduction of the Flex 52 instrument. Um, I would like to, to start the, this presentation from the concept of this device, so how it uh, uh, actually came to life, how uh, did our idea develop towards this, this instrument. To give you a little bit of background and to figure out together what kind of uh, issues it solves, so what kind of benefit it brings to you. The concept of this instrument uh, started from, let's say, a consideration on the actual uh, round instrument. So, you know, the old good round pointer gauges that we all know, we're a manufacturer of those. So you're, you're all into the business. So you well know that despite me a uh, new multifunction display or more sophisticated device, uh, the analog instruments are still uh, a, good, uh, um, a good portion of the market. So they're still widely used on instrument panels in general. That's why uh, mostly because of their simplicity and because they offer really a simple and cost-effective solution to display a sensor value. So, as you imagine, you won't like to have a multifunction super galactic display just to show a few level. So uh, these devices are actually widespread in the market already, so from old installation, but as well as in new installations. So they're still widely used. And sometimes, as you see, maybe from the picture here in the background, uh, dashes are just full of constellation of these instruments. So let's say a downside of it is that also they require quite a lot of space for the installation on your panel. This not doesn't imply only marine, but these instruments, uh, most of you are, are, are in marine, but uh, uh, these instruments are not just uh, the designed for marine, but for several other markets, several other applications. You see few of them here. So marine is for sure a big portion of that between power boats and sailing boats. But there are also other, other uh, applications like construction machinery, for example, in general industrial machines, uh, material handling machines, uh, two-wheelers, so motorcycles, power sport, out of the market. Let's say in general, as you know, everything, so every engine or every machinery that has some sensor on it basically requires an instrument to read that value. And what is better than an analog, an analog instrument? So a simple pointer, pointer instrument. So we have different markets where these devices are present. And this directly implies that uh, different markets bring different needs. So being so diverse, the application of, of the round instruments, you can imagine that many variants are defined for them. So because there are different different needs for every machine has a different different need. So also depending on the country where it's sold, which might have an impact, for example, on the unit of the instrument. So the general idea that I want to say is that uh, there are really diverse diverse articles defined. So they they might differ in dial scale. For example, you you know perfectly. For example, our uh, viewline portfolio, which is our analog instrumentation uh, portfolio family, there are really uh, a wide number of of, of um, part numbers of articles, they differ in dials. So for example, we have 3000 RPM, tachometers, 5000, 6000, all the way up to 8000. Uh, temperatures might go from Fahrenheit or Celsius, depending on the scale. And uh, most notably, every instrument has to match that specific sensor. So these devices are not uh, typically configurable. So if you have, uh, let, let's speak, uh, speak about fuel, for example. We have different sensors available. We have the European uh, ohmic value, so the resistant value, which is the 380, but we have the American, the 240-33. We have the Japanese one. And also not to speak about uh, uh, any other instrument uh, sensors that are on the market. So 
every sensor need to have a specific gauge that reads that sensors. And then there is also uh, differences in terms of uh, aesthetical customization. For example, the bezel, so bezel shape, bezel color. Uh, all in all, all I want to say is that as reference, just to give you an idea, our entire Viewline instrument portfolio is composed of more than 300 articles. So you might know it from the catalog or let's say we have really, a really, really a lot of part numbers available. This has some consequences as you, as you surely know. So having so many, so many articles available brings also some downsides. So some, some side effects. First of all, the stock value. So the stock maintenance, uh, whether you're a dealer, whether you're a shop, whether you're also a boat builder, for example, talking about spare parts, you need to always have a huge stock for keeping all the variants available um, in case they're requested. But then uh, if, if this is not the case, then you have some delay time to market because you don't have that specific gauge that is required. And by the way, for my experience, that's always the case. Uh, so you have to order and that is the whole process to get it, to source it and to deliver it to your customers. So, and this is just in case, in the case that that instrument is still available, because as surely most of you know, many times, um, so from time to time, some, some instrument variants are discontinued and that's a, that's a fact. So, and then this in, especially in refitting application, uh can be an issue because on the long term it's not always uh we can't always guarantee that a specific variant will be available in future and then lastly but uh, also important in case a new sensor is available or, or if there is a new sensor in the market you need uh, to have a specific new variant again of that instrument to support that sensor so you can only solve the integration of new sensors with a new par number, with a new article. I think more or less you understood where, where I'm going. So because this, this consequences then brought up us with, with this solution. So we actually developed the Flex 52 instrument exactly to overcome these issues. So we, we like to call this, this device the universal instrument or the all-in-one device. Uh, I think you got uh, you got why we, we like to call it like that, because uh, the goal of this instrument is to have a unique device that can ideally replace all the other analog instruments. So that can ideally replace or replicate all the other analog instruments with a single part number only. This was done. Uh, just shortly with uh, embedding a color display into the standard um, analog pointer gauge housing and uh, with a powerful hardware that it's fully configurable in order to support different sensors. So we will see more about it uh, later on. Needless to say, so as I anticipated already more or less, this brings uh, to, to you and to your customers uh, some benefits, actually a lot of benefits, because first of all, you have a single part number to manage. So you have one single article and not anymore all these uh, different variants that are with classical analog gauges. This is still a valid cost-effective solution for displaying a sensor, because still we're talking about a round gauge. But this then allows you also to replace all the gauges or very specific gauges or discontinued gauges because being programmable, you can use this device to replicate any other instrument that is on the market or was on the market. So this will support then a broad range of, range of sensors. Some are already pre-programmed in our, in our device. We will see more about this later. And also important, so being so versatile and this device clearly needs some configuration. So a clear target from us was to uh, realize an effortless, sort of effortless, but especially user-friendly configuration for it. We will see how it is just in a while. 
So I'd like to talk with you now to introduce a bit more the device. So speaking about the, its features, I would like step by step just to show you, first of all, its mechanical features, the hardware features, and then come to the configuration. Don't worry, we just, I don't just have the presentation. We will shortly see also the instruments live here. I have a demo installation here placed next to me. So about the design. Um, this instrument is, uh, from the aesthetical or mechanical point of view at least, uh, is a direct carryover from our actual uh, analog devices, from our viewline portfolio. But the difference is that instead of the pointer, so instead of a dial and a pointer, we implemented a TFT, a display, and uh, in particular a 1.44 TFT, sun readable because clearly this is an outdoor device and uh, it must be sun readable. This is a hard must. Uh, so no more mechanical movements. So like the pointer. So this is also an advantage of the instrument. And for the rest, for the housing, we we've kept uh, the whole the, the old view line housing. This is also good because it allows also from a mechanical point of view, from an installation point of view, to one to one replace the old instrument with the new in case of uh, a refitting, let's say, or a substitution. But also in case of new installation, let's say the 52 millimeter hole is uh, is quite the standard. Uh, holes cut cut size of the, for the panel. So the lens in front of the of the display is a PMMA with an anti fog coating, which is also important, especially in marine. The housing, as I said, is a 52 millimeter diameter uh, polycarbonate with flame retardant housing. The installation, so be, having the same housing, the installation uh, possibilities are the same as it was uh, with Vueline and in general how, as it is possible with the round instruments. So it's mounted through the hole thanks to the spin lock concept that you see here also represented or it can be mounted flash, flash on the panel. So for this is required uh, a, mounting kit, a mounting kit for flash installation, which is optional, it's already available for, we have it for Vueline. And again, similarly to, to the other analog instruments, you will have bezel customization. So in our portfolio, we have nine different bezels available, different in shape and different in color. We have triangular, round and square bezels in three different colors, chrome, uh, white and black. So I'm sure you're familiar with our Vueline um, instruments, so this will be nothing new for you. Um, again, about features, so some certification. Uh, this product is clearly is a CE, CE marked product and rich and Roth compliant. I just want to add uh, here a short, uh, um, a short comment about uh, uh, rich and Roth because uh, this is a common feature for all our products. Uh, our production line here meets the highest environmental standard and uh, the product is completely uh, produced lead free. And then the CE mark, uh, let's say, uh, implies that all the EMC environmental and safety uh, regulations are met. Uh, the protection grade of the device is an IP67 from the front and the operating voltage is 1224. So this is also something pretty standard that it was already uh, with, the, with the old instrumentation. Over voltage protection, reverse polarity protection, this is all available. The connector is also a carryover, which is also good because uh, changing the harness sometimes uh, is a cost. So definitely implies some cost. And also because this connector is really secure. So this is the MQS Tyco connector with eight pins, same as Vueline. So, this is about uh, some, some mechanical features of the device. Let's now talk about the hardware because this is actually something new. If the housing and, and the external parts are a carryover from an existing platform, the hardware is definitely powerful. Because as we said, this has to support a wide range of sensors so that uh, to, to, to be able to replace basically all the other instruments on the field. So the device is equipped with some analog connectivity. This 
input, there is a frequency input and a resistive input. Those are both fully configurable. We will see later on how. So the frequency input is normally used for engine speed, engine RPM or speed. This input is a uh, 0 to 4 kilohertz input and it allows for whole sensors or inductive sensor or connection to, for example, in the case of RPM, connection to uh, the alternator to get the pulses or connection to the ignition coil, for example. While the resistive input uh, is basically the input that is used by all the major sensors, so tank levels, temperature, pressures, rudder and trim, for example. So I think you know here all the all the resistive type sensors that are available. We have also quite a lot in our portfolio. So we already with these two input, we we can actually replace most of the actual uh, analog instruments because uh, with the, with these sensors supported we cover i would say almost 90 percent of of the analog instrument portfolio but that's not it because uh, in addition to the analogic connectivity being a new device we've added also some digital connectivity here because uh, we have some digital ports that can interface some really most advanced systems, state of the art, I would say. So we have actually respectively a lean connectivity. The lean we've been using recently, lean uh, implementing in, in, in some new products uh, since the introduction of the new intelligent battery sensor I, you might have already heard about. So basically this input is dedicated to that. We have a CAN port. So the CAN port, uh, supports two protocols. Actually, there are two variants of this product. We will see later on. So uh, for the marine variant, this will be an NMEA 2000 port. Uh, while we have also an industrial variant, just as an anticipation, which supports J1939, which is a typical uh, industrial protocol running on CAN. And uh, uh, most important is the NFC interface. We will see later on about it and for what it's used, uh, but basically this is the wireless interface, the contactless interface that is used to program the device. We, we will see later on um, how this is done and the, the, the real benefits that uh, using NFC brings. Just to complete the description, uh, the connector and the pinout. So this is more good for you to, to see to see how it looks like. Basically, we already described it. So the frequency, the resistive input, and the lean connections. Uh, the can. So as you you see here more clearly that in the marine variant, the can is a uh, is basically an NMA 2000 port, while in the industrial variant. This is a J1939 port. The connector, we have already talked about it. Uh, what was missing is the illumination input. So this is a digital input that it's used to toggle the display from day to night mode illumination. As you know, this is also quite a critical, uh, critical uh, feature for, especially for marine. In marine, I would say, so the day and night backlight adjustment is, uh, is quite important. Okay, so th this was all basically for the for the features of the device. Uh, now I want to show you a bit more uh, how how this device represents all the values. You see here already the picture. So, but let's go a bit more in detail uh, because also here there are some quite cool things I want to show you. So the um, the device embeds a TFT as we said. So this TFT being in, embedded in a 52 millimeter uh, device, it's, it's not that big, so there is not much space. So we actually have two layouts that are possible uh, in this, um, to be set up in the gauge. A single data layout is the one that basically you see in this picture on top. So we wanted to go for the biggest data representation possible. Given the space, as you see, the numbers are the kings here. You see how big they are, you can see it from far away, and important is also to have a good contrast and to be able to see them also under sunlight. So we have 
the number, the value, we have the symbol. So for example, here you see the fuel, you have the ISO symbol. I, this is, we typically use ISO symbols, uh, or in some cases, especially for marine, for some other things, we, we use also text to show, uh, to show the data when the ISO symbol is not available. And then the unit, of course, here also very important. And then the bar graph. So there is a bar graph, which in this case here is, is a green bar graph. Every data has a different color of the bar graph. This, this is really good because it gives you also a nice visual representation of the data. You immediately see uh, if your fuel, if your temperature is in range or is out of range. We will say later on that there is also uh, representation for out of range data or alarm data. So this is also a good feature of this instrument. So this is the single data layout. There is then a dual data layout. You can set up the instrument, as you see in the picture below, to actually show two data. This brings uh, really another big benefit of this gauge because uh, this is not an all-in-one gauge only, but it's also more specifically a two-in-one gauge because uh, in the sense that uh, with one instrument here, you can actually substitute two. So this is, a, this is a big benefit actually. And you see here how it is represented. So here the bar graph is not there to avoid to overcomplicate the, the screen, but numbers are still quite big. I would say that we stopped at the dual, a dual layout because uh, going for more was in our opinion too much for such a small instrument. And here you have basically all the same information that you have in the single one. So this is what I was uh, talking about, the two instruments in one. So thanks to this dual screen layout, uh, you, can, you can have the benefit to substitute two instruments with just one, with just this, which implicates a, a good cost saving for panel instrumentation. So you can use just one instrument but not only from the costing point of view, but also practical solution. Because as we saw before, uh, some panels are really overcrowded with these instruments. So sometimes having one instrument instead of two uh, can save you a lot of space, especially when you don't have that much on a panel. Uh, and other important feature, just to complete, we don't want to miss any feature uh, that it was available in the old analog line is the alarm. Uh, clearly, this is really important for monitoring a sensor. So alarm here, there is no telltale, but this is represented into the TFT, the alarm. So the, the alarm threshold is fully configurable as well. We will see also in a while how this is done. Uh, and the representation of, of the alarm is done through an icon, the alarm icon that you see here, or the color of the bar graph that renders red, which, which really um, catches your attention, even from far away. Uh, well, let's say for the dual layout, since there is no bar graph, actually the, the digits will be turning, turning red in this case. So let's come then to the um, nice configuration features. So for such a general device, uh, I think you understand that the configuration is uh, the most important part here, the most important feature of this instrument. Uh, here we have really a big innovation, uh, and this is the contactless configuration. Uh, you might have already heard about it because we have already implemented it in our link up gateways. Uh, and by the way, we've just been granted an innovation award at IBEX uh, for that devices. But I would say that the big innovation actually uh, lies in the, in the uh, configuration method, which is this, this very same one implemented in the Vueline Flex. So what it is about? Um, to configure a device, there is a companion app. There is a smartphone app. We will see later how it looks like, but um, this is a, a, a very easy and user-friendly way to program it. Everyone can do it. You don't need a specific hardware. We'll see how how it is uh, how it is working later. So this app is available, of course, for both the platforms on the stores for for Apple for uh, Android. 
And basically, all you have to do is to do your configuration on the smartphone, in a which is presented in an easy and intuitive way. And then once you're done, you just have to click on apply and just tap the smartphone onto the instrument. So like this, and the, and the device is instantly programmed. So I will show you just, uh, just in a while how it is done in our demo installation over here. Another great feature, another great feature of this device is the powerless configuration. So what I've just described, this uh, NFC-based configuration, contactless configuration, can be done also without having the gauge powered. This brings a really great advantage because um, imagine when you're a dealer, when you're a shop, when you sell uh, an instrument, be having just one single part number, one single article, you just take it, you program the device, you don't have to connect it to power, so you can just take it off the box, you can program it, put it back in the box, and just sell it. So this is really, really a great advantage. So no power is required, and also no pairing is required. So the beauty of, of using the, the NFC instead of, for example, Bluetooth, is that no pairing is required prior to the, to the configuration. And this is also a great advantage. You can just open and hypothetically also serially, serially program more than one device in a shot. We'll see more about it when I will show you the app just just in a few minutes. But uh, uh, I want to show you what is possible to, to configure with the app. So the display layout, so basically what we already discussed. So the display layout can be, can be selected, single or dual. The gauge type, so you need to tell you are a fuel, you are a temperature, or so you have to program the, the gauge type and the gauge instance. The instance is basically the engine number in case of an engine uh, parameter or a tank number in case of uh, tank levels. So this is fuel one, this is fuel two, for example. And then the sensor calibration, because as we said, the hardware supports all the sensors. So it, you have to tell the instrument which sensor is connected and which characteristic it has. And also then lastly, the alarm threshold as discussed. Some other settings are available. Uh, the illumination intensity, for example. So uh, day and night for both uh, the, the situations, and then the units. Just a short overview uh, before showing you live the, the devices, the gauge type that are available. So for the marine variant, these are all the uh, uh, gauge that you can basically substitute, that you can replicate. You see the the list is complete, so no analog, uh, mm, let's say for example, view line variant is left off. Uh, we go from fuel level to fresh or wastewater, trim, coolant, boost, all the temperatures. And, and we also added some new because having the NMEA 2000 connectivity, of course, allows to, to get more data, for example, uh, GPS data, uh, uh, clock, speed over ground, course over ground engine hours so we we don't have to forget that part of the analog instruments normally there is the engine hour also an engine hour counter also which is a very important uh, device uh, also i would say wherever there is an engine it's important to 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 have the end total engine hours this is also available and the engine hour counter is done internally in the instrument so it can completely substitute that device too. So finally, um, let's see it in action. So let me move shortly to the uh, other uh, demo uh, installation I have here so that I can show you the devices. You should be able to see them now. All right, so here is how the devices look like. 
let me move there just to show you all the instruments. So this is what we've been talking about right now. Here you, you see uh, different instruments with uh, different uh, uh, also uh, bezel mounted on them. You see the, the, the chrome, you see the, uh, the white bezel, you see the black triangular, you see the black round, and you see how the GUI looks like here. So uh, I have here some uh, sensor, demo sensor behind here, so I can, I can show you, you can see here the bar, the bar graph moving. Yeah. So here we have programmed, for example, a fuel gauge, a rudder gauge, fresh water. These are just some examples. You see different values have a different bar graph color. Uh, this one is red because you see I, I programmed before an alarm. So here you see that this one now has an alarm. Here. The rudder angle, which has this uh, this different uh, uh, bar graph setting, so this is vertical, representing the rudder left and right. So as you see, it's really cool, and uh, even from from far away, when you're standing a bit far away, you can see directly all the values just just by looking at the instruments, uh, thanks to the to the bar graph. So um, let's have a look then at how the the app is is working so um i have my phone here i hope it's it's good enough for you in the to, to see the the smartphone it's never easy to to show to show these devices on camera i hope it rendered good um so as you see this is how the app looks like so there are three tabs available one is for the screen it's quite intuitive because uh, as the first step when you open the app you are presented this very uh, screen so this is how you want the gauge to look like and on the top you have the the a preview of the instrument showing you how the instrument uh, screen will look like with the actual configuration that you're programming you see here that if i change the layout here I can change and toggle between uh, the single and the dual data layout. I see that the preview is changing. So basically here, we, we, you have to choose how the, the display, the screen will be composed. So first of all, as we said, choose the layout. Then below here, you have the data selection. So you have to tell the instrument with, uh, what kind of, of, of gauge you want it to be. So you just click at the moment, this is voltmeter, and here through a spinner, you have the whole selection of the, of the instrument types that we've seen before. So I can choose anyone, let's say boost, amp, boost pressure. You see that the preview is updating on top here. So, I have to program the gauge type, the instance. So this is instance one. I have to say which which uh, instance is that. If the engine one, engine two, for example, this is up to four. Then the unit, for example, here for for the for the pressure, we have bar psi. Uh, so we can select the unit and also the bar graph. So this is this is useful because. Uh, depending on on the sensor you have connected, so you you can choose you can set up the bar graph. So what when you want to consider the bar graph to be to be full? So if it's the range basically. So if it's a two bar, a five bar, for example, and then you can also set an alarm. So you can just activate it. You activate it here. You go in and then you type in the alarm value, I don't know, one bar. And that's it. So here is basically how you configure your instrument. Uh, first of all, not to forget, you always have to read. So 
you have to press read here. This is automatically happening when opening the app. And then you have, just have to put the, the, your smartphone on top of the lens here to have the gauge read. So you see that now this is a fresh water instrument as it is represented here. And you see that every, the app is then telling me the entire configuration. So you just have to read, tap on the device, and that's done. Then the same applies when you want to write. So say that this rather angle instrument, I want now to be a trim. I can just press trim. I can press apply. I can put it on top. And now the instrument is showing trim. So now we just configured this device to be a trim gauge. This is, let's say, the first, the first uh, part of the app. There is the second tab, which is the input tab, which allows you to configure the sensor that is connected to this specific gauge. So if everything is off, the instrument will consider that the, the value is coming from NMEA 2000. If, on the other hand, you have a sensor connected to that, you have to open up, for example, in case of, depending on, on the gauge type, so for a trim level, you have a resistive sensor. Here you see that you can choose which sensor you want to connect. In this case, this is locked to trim level because we selected the gauge to be a trim level. And the range. So here, if we open the sensor, you can choose which sensor is connected to that. So single or a dual station. So here is, you see that the other option are they activated because the trim sensor just allow for a resistive input. But let's say, for example, if we program this to be an RPM instrument, so an engine speed, I can also program the frequency input. So here, the sensor can be configured. This is an RPM sensor. The range here is also good. As we talked, there are different, with classical instruments, there are different dial scales. So this is basically the dial scale. You want to say that the maximum revolution of your engine, or the, let's say the dial, the old dial of the instrument is 5,000 RPM. This has an impact on the bar graph again. And you then, you just program it. The last one is the IBS sensor, so the battery sensor. This is also uh, um, a sensor that we have introduced recently, with, also with the link up device. Uh, here, you have the chance to directly connect this sensor to the instrument. So this device can also become just a battery monitor. For example, uh, here, when you select, instead of RPM, battery state of charge, for example. So like this, you will have just a gauge that monitors your battery and, and gives you the state of charge anytime. And when you go here, you see that the resistive and frequency input are grayed out. You cannot open it. But you can configure the IBS sensor. So that's it about the configuration of the device. Let's see a little bit also how, for example, here we see you always have to first read because before I was reading this instrument. So before you always have to read the instrument you want to program to have always the actual uh, data here and then you change the configuration. So let's see how the, for example, the dual screen looks like. I can program it. And you see that here, now the instrument is programmed. I can, I can change here to show. So in this case, when a dual screen is selected, the part below is just doubled. So you will have some selection to do for the, for the upper part of the dual screen. And the same selections are just replicated below for the part below of the screen. So, you see how easy it is really to change it now. Let's say you, you are seeing dashes here right now because I don't have a sensor connected to that. So this is how it renders where no, when no data is coming. So I just have here a sensor connected as you see for one 
for, for, for in this case, this is fresh water only. So this is how, uh, how the um, programming is done and how the dual screen looks like. As you see, the dual screen is really good because it allows you to have, uh, uh, to substitute one instrument with two. So with just this, you have two, two uh, sensors displayed. So I think that this was, was good to show it to you. Uh, we can do some other playthrough. Just I really want to, that it's, uh, it's clear to you how easy and how really effortless is the configuration of the devices. This is really instantaneous. Uh, so you see, it's really, it's really easy. And uh, just to, to complete, I would like to show you also what I was telling you before. So I have a new instrument here. So this is just, just out of the box. This is unpowered. So this is has no connection as it would be out, out, out of your warehouse. So you take the general instrument here, you take and you read, and you see that the programming, the reading and the, and the, and the writing is also possible without the gauging being powered. So this is really cool. So you can read, now we see this is all of these gauges by default uh, out of the production are set to be voltmeters. And let's say, a customer is coming that want to have a fuel level. I set the fuel level sensor. I set also the, the, the sensor that I have connected so I can program it as you like. And I can just program it. And this now is a fuel gauge. This is a specific fuel gauge. So then the gauge can go back into the box and can be sold and installed. I think that uh, we're pretty much through all the presentation I had for you. Um, I would like to uh, show you again, maybe some other values, just, uh, just really, it, it, it's, so, it's so easy. And it's so satisfactory also to program that I would like you to see the gauge uh working and all these colors just seen on the screen i hope that uh, uh, from this webinar and from the screen resolution this renders good because uh, uh, w when you have it in your hands it really looks good uh, please ensure to see as soon as possible a live sample of this uh, of this device um all right so we can, I think, go back. I have just to complete just a couple of um, other information for you before before closing. I think we're reaching the hour time that we have started. We have planned for this uh, presentation. So um, just um, last information for you before before leaving is the kids. So we are uh, planning to have some kids with this instrument, including these instruments. I anticipated you before the marine variant and the industrial variant. Uh, we will have these two here, you, you see we, have, we will have a total of four uh, par numbers. Uh, for this uh, instrument. One is the Marine, so NMEA 2000, all the analog input, uh, the LIN uh, connection for battery sensor, and uh, 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 M12 NMEA 2000 connector, which is on the harness. So this is embedded on the harness. Uh, so this cable is included in the packaging. The industrial version, on the other hand, as I anticipated before, will have the CAN port configured as a J1939 protocol. For the rest, it has the, the same features as the Marine, so analog input and the lean for battery sensor. And then there are two other part numbers here, which are kits. So uh, in, in the, with these two, we like to include in the packaging also the battery sensor two variants because we have 
one intelligent battery sensor for monitoring 12 volt batteries and another one for 20 volt, um, 24 volt batteries. So these will be our, the same instrument basically, but in a kit together with the sensor.